Today's video is made possible by Luxite. So welcome back to the shop friends. I'm excited to show you the table I built for my Harbor Freight drill press. The drill press table has multiple features, one of which is a sliding stop block. I've also got a sliding fence. So after time, the center of the table will get drilled out by the bit, so I have a replaceable block that I can place there. So now you know some of the main features of the table, let's get started. So first I came up with the size of the table. I decided on a 14 inch wide and 12 inch deep tabletop. Now that's the plywood portion, that excludes the trim. The tabletop is made of two different pieces of plywood. The bottom surface or the bottom piece of plywood is three quarter inch MDF. Once I had it cut out on the table saw, then I was able to take my two inch Forstner bit, drill a hole where the column will be and then cut out around that using the bandsaw. I was able to then fine tune that using the new spindle sander. Once I was happy with the piece of MDF, then I went ahead and matched it to a piece of birch plywood. I went through the same steps, including the table saw, the drill, the band saw, and then also the spindle sander to get that piece to the same size as the piece of MDF. So in addition to cutting the piece of birch plywood to the proper size, I needed to cut some grooves in it for the T-tracks. The T-tracks will hold the fence in place and allow it to slide front to back. So to cut those grooves for the T-tracks, otherwise known as dados, that was pretty easy to do using the router table. So the dados on the tabletop for the T-tracks are a half inches deep and I did cut those in multiple passes. So before gluing the two pieces of plywood together, I needed to cut the square hole for the sacrificial blocks I made to put on the tabletop. So that was pretty easy accomplished by just drilling out some holes in the corners with my Forstner bits and then going ahead and using my jigsaw to cut that out. So next I turn my attention to the adjustable fence. It's made from a piece of MDF and birch plywood. It measures three inches in width and also 20 inches in length. Building the fence was pretty easy. I just cut those pieces out on the table saw and then trimmed them to length on the miter saw. While I finish up the fence, let me introduce you to today's sponsor. Luxlite is a division of the New York Saw and Knife Company. This company produces high-end carbide tip table saw and miter saw blades in various configurations. I'm currently using their 12 inch 80 tooth crosscut saw blade. If online reviews are correct, I'll be using this saw blade up to eight times longer than saw blades that I would purchase at my local box store. I'll be sure to put a link in the description. So in addition to having the adjustable fence, I wanted the adjustable stop block. So that also needed a T-track. So just like I cut the T-track grooves or dados on the tabletop, I did the same thing on the router table using the router table and I went down the center of the fence. The fence also needed two holes in it matching the, the distance between the T-tracks for the hardware for attaching the fence to the, to the tabletop. So I can't drill a total of three inches on the drill press, so I finished it off using my hand drill. Making this stop block was really simple. I just used a scrap piece of MDF on the table saw and miter saw, and then I was able to fine tune it a little bit using the new disc sander. Be sure you chant for the corner of your stop block. It just prevents dust from getting down there and stopping your material from going all the way to the edge of the stop block. See, if you're new to the T-Tracks, they're really easy to cut just using a metal handsaw. So once I had the two pieces of plywood prepared, I went ahead and glued those together for the tabletop. Then I was ready to go ahead and put a little bit of trim around the edges to stiffen up those edges some. So for that I used some leftover pallet wood that I had milled up uh, last year and I used some pieces of oak. That'll really strengthen up the edges of the table and it'll also prevent 
um, you know, prevent you from seeing that end grain of the plywood. Once I had the pieces of pallet wood cut and glued and bratted to the sides of the plywood table, then I went ahead and used my dovetail saw and my chisel and I uh, extended those dados a little bit so I could put my T-tracks in. I didn't want the ends of the T-track to be rough or splinter, so I just used a bastard file and just smoothed those up a little bit. So I've got a new video coming out soon talking about accessories for using T-tracks. If you're not subscribed and hit that bell, be sure you do that so you'll know when I post my next video. So once I had the fence and the table made, then I went ahead and sanded it down to 220 grit, and then I finished it off with some rub on poly and some paste wipes. So once I had the table completed, I needed a way to attach it to the drill press. So I went ahead and marked out the grooves on the bottom of the factory uh, drill press table, marked that onto my new drill press table, and then went over and drilled some holes. So I used some of these quarter inch threaded inserts. These fit these quarter inch uh, threaded rods that I bought off Amazon. And then those will just attach right into the, uh, the inserts. So these quarter inch threaded rods will screw right into those threaded inserts in the bottom of the drill press table. Then I can place one of these star knobs on there just to tighten everything down. If this video brings you value, will you please leave a thumbs up? That's really helpful for the channel. Let me know in the comments if developing some plans of some select projects would be useful to you. If there's enough people that have interest in plans for some of these projects, I might be able to figure out a way to get those made and then make them available to you. Well, as always, thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.